Welcome, Dr. Paul Swan. It's great to have you here today, and we're going to be talking about dice. So, uh, Heather, um, people often, um, uh, I guess, dismiss dice a little bit about how they can uh, be useful. Um, because I'm speaking across several countries at, at this point here, in Australia, we allow people to say uh, dice meaning the singular, but I can use the word die and dice as well, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going to roll some stuff. I often call them random um, hexahedral random number generators, which basically means That's dice. All right. So, <laughs> That's <a> mouthful. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Particularly in, in countries where uh, perhaps gambling is a little bit um, a bit of a no-no. So basically, it's about generating random numbers. So I thought we'd just uh, share a couple of ideas with you and uh, follow it through. And essentially, look, um, we're going to talk about just some different dice. I have some that are on my uh, set here. Like the, the, I've got the really massive one that kids like a lot. You can see how big it is. Bounces around. We won't use that one today, but if I was working in a classroom, that'd be one I'd, I'd want to use and so forth. Uh, but we're just going to use some pretty basic stuff. We're not even going to use uh, some of these unusual ones. Today, we're just going to focus on the basically the uh, the six and the ten face dice and so forth. So just to get us uh, rolling, I'll give a little bit of background. And then I thought we'd play a couple of games that I'd link to, to bits that maybe uh, parents can play at home or teachers could play in a classroom. So, And uh, a couple of the games you and I would play against one another so we can sort of uh, see how it goes. So just to sort of put us in the picture here, we're mostly just going to use those 10-sided. And when I say 10-sided, they're numbered from 0 to 9, so they're producing the digits that we use in our number system, the 6-sided. And look, I'll talk a little bit about pocket dice because they're sort of a universal uh, sort of thing there. Okay, so um, there, there's, as I said, you can get all sorts. You can get 4-sided, you can get 8-sided, you can get 12-sided, 20-sided even if you wanted to. Uh, the, probably the most useful set for if you're in a classroom would be the ones that have got uh, the six and the tens in it. And I'm, having a little box like the one I've just illustrated there just helps you know, get your things in and out. And we've chosen different colored dice because that means you can refer to different colors and so forth. All right, so that's one thing I just want to do, uh, get across. The second is, look, if you're at home and you don't have access to, um, to dice, then you could use a paper clip and a spinner. All you're doing is generating the numbers from uh, one to six or zero to nine. So anything that we do today, um, if you don't have dice, then feel free to uh, to do that. So I just didn't want people to be precluded. Um, essentially, anything you can do with a dice, you can do with a spinner and vice versa quite often. So that's just to give us that bit of background that, that happens here. So there's one other thing just before we get started. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the fact that, say, um, sometimes you might want to make your own dice, so to speak. Now, you can get uh, pocket dice, and essentially pocket dice, you just slide pieces in, uh, as you can sort of see in the picture there. Um, we've got shapes and various bits and pieces. Now, I appreciate that people may not have a pocket dice either, so I've made a little video which is called Making Your Own Pocket Dice, and you can find that on YouTube, and essentially... Um, uh, we'll probably, I don't know if you still have milk cartons uh, where you are, but essentially, um, you know, you can make your own with a, with a, just a milk carton. And in about a minute and a half, I can, uh, I've explained on this YouTube video how to cut that down. And then you can whiz on our website, grab some of the templates and make your own dice. So that just gives a bit of, uh, makes it a bit more universal there. Uh, in that case here, I've got the extra creamy milk, uh, but you can you can use almond milk if you wanted to. It's just the carton uh, that matters there and so forth. So basically, if you want to get some little inserts, a bit like I, I showed there, then uh, we have some of them, not all of them, sitting up in this little sampler and inserts. Now those, if you make your own with the um, milk carton, just reduce photocopy a bit and then they can just glue on. Um, we've made them to fit the standard pocket dice that you can get. That would be there. So at this point here, I thought we'd uh, launch into some bits and pieces. I'll describe one game and then you and I are going to play some games and so forth. Um, this one actually designed, um, I, I should get a little bit of background here. I have two of my uh, grandchildren. One is in year one here, so she's about six and the other one's four. I actually have a third one, but she's only just learning to walk, so she hasn't reached school yet. <laughs> Okay, and so the game I'm about to describe is designed for in Australia would be about a year one. But the notion is 
What I like about dice is that um, often it's the dice making you do things. You're not that teacher, not that grumpy teacher. That's that dice made me do these sort of things. So the dice can become the bit of the focal point. So I'll explain this game pretty simply. And you can either make it with the uh, milk carton or however it might work there uh, to start with. So essentially, you get your children uh, in a circle. Now, uh, Heather, I don't sing the circle song, but most teachers will know there's a song that you sing to get your children in a circle. All right, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, poor listeners, I don't want to hear me sing. And essentially, <laughs> we would grab uh, a bean bag, we'd have the children in a circle, and you might have, as you can uh, probably see there, uh, the word clockwise to slid into the uh, pocket dice or you, know, you put it on your, your milk carton dice and so forth. Now if I wanted to focus on the word clockwise I'd probably put it on five faces. So the nice part is there's six faces on the dice but you could have five of them with the word clockwise so that comes up a lot in that one there yeah. and maybe one anti-clockwise uh, that would be there. So essentially this is a bit like um, Different uh, countries, different places have different names, but a bit like duck, duck, goose or uh, hot potato or something like that. I'll explain how this works. So I'll take you back to the picture. So you have a child. We know that the bean bag is going to pass around the circle in a clockwise direction. And the numbers that you might throw on your pocket dice might be going, it's going to go five, you know, 10, whatever numbers you decide, could be teen numbers, could be any sort of numbers you put in the other pocket dice. And essentially that bean bag gets passed around in a clockwise direction, a certain number of places and the children have to count. Now the really interesting part is if the bean bag lands on you, then uh, what you need to do is drop the bean bag and run around the circle in a clockwise direction and come. Yes, this action, getting kids up and out and you know out into the playground or maybe in a big big group there. So just bear in mind um, that essentially dice can be used to trigger some actions. It's not just always about number things. And so today we'll talk about some number things. We'll talk about some probability. But I just like the fact that you can be uh, pretty flexible uh, with your use of dice and so on. Now you can imagine when that comes back, that child's run around the circle, um, uh, then they pick up the bean bag, we roll again and it goes around. It's amazing how often it comes up clockwise, but that's what I'm sort of focusing on. I've got to tell you one story though. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and of course there's a child there with basically crutches, and who does it land on but the child with crutches? But anyway, uh, it was a good spirit. Someone else ran around the circle. It was very nice. Uh, it showed a bit of caring. So let's move into a, another uh, game here. And this is where we'll start to sort of build that sort of uh, thinking and so forth. Okay, so I call this one Mary's game. Just happens that, well, I have two stories to this. One is the real story is that um, the girl in the class where we made this up was called Mary. That's the real story. But my mother-in-law's name was also Mary. So depending on uh, how I wanted to, to spin that story a little. Now, That's Heather, can correct. you see there's some numbers there, 0 to 12? Okay, so yep. all you need to do is write at your end, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 12. So I'm going to write it on my board here. You'll see exactly what we're doing. Okay, so I'm just going to go to this point here. and just clear the dice off here. And all you have to do is literally write, and I'll use my little whiteboard for this case here. So I'm going to write 0, one, two, three, four, and basically keep on going up till you get to 12. Okay, so that's all you need to do to set this game up. It's pretty easy. All right, so I'm just going to finish writing at five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now, you should have the same sitting there. Okay, I do indeed. So we've got that, uh, that idea that, that that's happening. Okay. So the next bit that sits in here is um, we're going to roll the two dice and you, we get to make some decisions. Now I'm going to roll for both of us at the moment. I normally use two different colored dice, just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, and that one there, you may not be able to see that white, so I'll just grab the red dice to make that one a little bit easier. Now when I roll those numbers, I have a choice at this point here. And the choice is that, um, uh, I can either add the two numbers that are showing or find the difference. In other words, do a subtraction between the two numbers. So let me let me give you an example. So I'm going to roll here and I've rolled a six and a five. 
So if this was your turn, Heather, you have a choice. You can say six and five is 11 and cross off the 11 from yours. Or before you make that choice, you could also say the difference or you know, the subtraction. If I subtract five from six, I'm left with one. So you can either cross out. So I just make sure that's clear for you. You can either cross out the, the one, because six take five is one, or you can cross out the 11. So you need to make your choice now. And once you've made your choice, you can't change, all right? So... You know, I'm going to add them together. Okay, so you've got 11. Do the 11 for the first one. Yeah, so you cross out 11. So now it's my turn, and I'll uh, bring it up so you can see. Okay, it turns out that I've rolled a 6 and a 4, okay? So once again, I have a choice. I can say 6 and 4 is 10, or I could say 6 take 4 is 2. I have one of those two choices. Now, uh, I'm going to be a bit like you, so I'm going to cross out the 10. All right, now I'll play, I'll give you another turn and I think people will get the, how we're playing this game here. So I, I'm rolling again now. You could roll at your end, but I'm going to roll at my end. So we've got a six and a three here. So once again, you've got a choice. Is it six and three is nine? Or six take three is three. You can make your choice about the where you want to cross off. Now I'm going to do nine. The only reason is I think whenever I play dice games and I play Monopoly or any of those games with my son, I always get a lot of low numbers. So I'm going to do the high numbers first. I'm going to, this is how I'm going to my strategy here. So I'm going to take off nine. Okay. So in this case, you can see how the game goes forward and back and forward and back and so forth. Now there's two ways that you can play this game. And one is we can keep rolling until one of us has crossed all the numbers off. That does take quite a while because, as you imagine, you might be waiting for the last number to come up. The other way is to say that we're going to have, say, six or seven rolls each, and whoever's crossed the most off after the seven rolls or each is the winner. So that's that's one. Now, I often play that game uh, quite a bit just to get a bit of a you know, feeling for it. And after a while, people get some sort of intuitive ideas of maybe this is a better choice than this one. Now, we're not going to look today at the probability or the chance. I'm just doing it for practicing addition and subtraction. But if later on people want to explore that, there's a lot of interesting mathematics. But I'd like to pick two things up from uh, this game uh, in particular. Okay, One is children learn very quickly. Okay, So I've got in this case a double six. Children learn very quickly that okay, double six is 12. But actually, as a difference or subtraction, six takes six is zero. Okay, so, and in fact, any double. So if that happened to be four and four, could also give me zero. Any time a double comes up, I can get zero. So I can make a choice. But if you think about it, six and six is only going to come up once. Right, so if I had six and six, the good choice initially is to choose the 12. Here's the other piece of that might be useful to people. So if I've got... Uh, two numbers that are one apart, say a four and a three. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so if I had a four and uh, then I had a three, so the numbers are one apart, the difference is always one. So when they're just like that, once again, I can get one very easily. And children learn very quickly in playing this game, doubles as a subtraction is always zero. And these things, the four and three is like a near double, will always give me one as the subtraction. So a really simple game like that. You can be up and playing with two dice. I often use two different colours just to distinguish a bit. You write the numbers 0 to 12 down and away you are ready, you're ready to go. So that's a that's a simple game that I think most people could play, say with the dice from their Monopoly set or, or something like that. So you happy with that one? I'm very happy with that one. That's the Mary. That's Mary's game. Mary's game, yes. And, uh, <laughs> All right, so that, that's one of those ones. Now, um, you can, um, I did design a version of this called Turn the, uh, Turn the Tile. And uh, in that version, it's a big version. So in a school setting, they would have these uh, big uh, sheets that went on the floor, you know, and children stand behind it and two big dice get rolled. And then they work a team of 13 versus a team of 13. So that's a game called Turn the Tile. It's the same game, really. But that's for a class sort of setting that, that would be there. So let's have a look at a, another idea just to take us on a little bit further and just to see how that goes. So we just played Mary's game. Now, here's a game I like to play called Poison. 
Now, uh, we're, I'm going to give you the general version of the game. Now, bear in mind, we're going to change it a little bit. I happen to have Australian coins on there. You could put any coins from whichever part of the world. I uh, appreciate that people are watching all over the place here. So we could have pence in there and all sorts of uh, things there. So let me share the basic way that poison works. There's a poison number, essentially. So I'll explain to you what that might be. So in our case here, okay, I'm just going to move to this bigger uh, dice here. We've just got those ones there and so forth. The poison number for this game is six. All right, so, uh, and at this point, uh, normally you can play with a whole clerk. Be a small group works well. So if you've got three or four children at home, they really love this game sitting here. So the poison number is six. Now, the way I play this game is uh, fairly simple. Um, you get the first two rolls free. So for example, if I rolled a five, Heather, you've got five points right now. And anybody in the group has got five points. Then, say I rolled a three, okay? Five and three is eight. We're, you're all on eight points. However, at, at this point in time, you have a choice now, Heather. You can say, I'm resting, I'm holding, I'm banking those eight points. Uh. All right? Now, that means you've got them in the bank. But you can keep, start, keep rolling. We can keep rolling, okay? But once you've banked, you're out of the game for that set of turns. The rest of us could keep rolling and adding more and more score. Okay. However, okay. however, if the poison number comes up, we get wiped out. We go back to zero. Okay. So I'll just take you through this a little bit here. I know that you're not gonna you're not gonna hold on eight points. Okay. But you can see some yeah. children take more or less risk uh, than others that sit there. So we're all on eight points. So imagine I roll again and I roll a one. Okay. We're on nine points, and I'm gonna at this uh, uh, point in time. I'm going to uh, sit down. So I've kept my nine points. Imagine you're still uh, standing. I'm still going. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I roll like, oh, look at that. What oh. a fuck. Oh, how fluky was that? Okay, so sorry. Bad, bad luck, Heather. I'm on nine points and you're on zero. Can you? zero. Because you just, but now we can then stand up again and then keep rolling. I'm going to start from nine points, but you're starting from. <laughs> Zero. Zero. Yeah, they are, right? <laughs> and so, but yeah, that was just fluke, pure fluke uh, that that came up <laughs> on six at that point. And so we roll, now we might have a set total that we're aiming for 50 points or 100 points or whatever it is. But can you imagine a whole classroom of children? They're standing up and then start sitting down. The few that are left, you know, when this happens, the six comes on, there's a sense of glee that runs through it. Now that really, <laughs> that game's really just about adding some single digit numbers, but it, the dice sort of have that randomness about it to, to make it a bit more interesting. Yeah. There's a bit of strategy as well. The children really have to think, am I going to risk it? Am I not going to? You bring yeah. out some characters, I think. Yeah. <laughs> the sort of, uh, and, and look, um, some children have various strategies. So like uh, if a large number comes out, they sit immediately. Or after say five rolls, they think, oh, a six is going to come up Soon, so there's different strategies that you might use. Now, I'm just going to take you back to the slides and just say how you can take a, a game. Once children understand a game like this, you can take a game and extend it a bit further. So you might notice, so I've got the pocket dice there, which once again, you can make with the milk carton and stick the coins on the, the other side. So in Australian coins, we have a five cent and a 10 cent and so forth, right up to a one and a two dollar coin. Now, in the UK or other places, you'd have different coins, obviously, on the outside. But I have a poison coin. So if the poison coin happens to be the $1 gold coin, if that comes up, you bust. You go bankrupt. I call the game bankrupt. All right? But you know, if you turn up, a, say, 10 cent or something of that nature, you just keep accumulating the money. All right? And once again, you can bank it and hold the money. Okay? But if you risk it, you could go bankrupt, Thanks. all right? So you see you take the same game idea, and all I'm saying is the dice gave you the general idea, something like a pocket dice or something we can, um, they're also write and wipe dice where you can write on like a little whiteboard sort of things. This gives you a bit more flexibility. That That's really a, a, that idea. So that's just another little game that we might play, 
Okay, I'll give you another one. So it's a slight extension of that. This time we'll use two dice. Okay, and I call okay. this I call this game, and I'll bring it up here. I call this game avoiding seven. Okay, so now once again, same thing. I'll just put the dice here. I'll talk to you how to play it. But once you've played the game we've just played, uh, this one will become quite obvious because this time we have two dice, but the idea is we want to avoid a total of seven. So a bit like we wanted to avoid the poison number, we want to avoid the total of seven. So I'll show you on the on the screen here. So for example, we could keep, so I really don't want to get four and three. That's, that's the last thing I want, that would be, right? So at this point here, we might roll, and I rolled six. So once again, I might bank the six that we've got there. So this is a bit of a harder version of what we've just done, okay? So you happy for me to roll again? All right, so all right, there we go. All right, see so how we go. And I rolled Isn't another six. So at this point, we're 12, all right? But remember, should I roll a seven, Bang, you know, we, we lost those those same sort of things that sit there. Okay, so you ready to roll again? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and, whoa, another six. So now that you're on 18 points, do you want to, yeah, you want to bank those ones, Heather, or you? Uh, oh, no, I'm no? going to go again. Okay, all right, okay then, all right. Feeling lucky. Oh, and a five, all right. So you're going to stay? Last time, I'm yeah, going to okay, stay. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. Let's try, let's try. Oh, six. I thought it was going to come up seven. Oops. <laughs> oh, that just turned, oh, it turned over seven. <laughs> right, but you've got the... That's a magical dice. Yeah. Um, but you've got the notion here, so I'll just take you through this bit. So essentially, it's the same type of game. We just made it a little bit harder. That's all that's happened. We're now rolling two dice. Now, at this point here, you might see there's a bit of a grid on the slides there. If I wanted to, I could look at, well, so what's the chance of rolling a seven? Okay. And if you think about it with two dice, there's quite a, quite a lot of opportunity. So for example, if I roll a, say a six and a one, that's seven. If I roll a four and a, a four and a three, that's seven. If I roll a five and a two, that's seven or, and vice versa. So there's lots of ways that you might get a seven, whereas there's only one way you're going to get a 12, that's six and six. So you see how, this game's pretty similar to the Mary's game, it just, but it takes the characteristics of the other game. Um, and often I find uh, sometimes, um, uh, I don't know, have you ever played Monopoly at someone else's house? There, yeah. yeah, the rules change. There's, al <laughs> there's always house rules. Uh, and sometimes even in these games, uh, same sort of thing happens. So sometimes I just give children a couple of dice and they end up making their own game, which is pretty neat. They make their own fun. See, and I like, the, for want of a better word, the creative element there. See, mathematics can be creative. So you've got the tool called dice, and, you know, we've created our own game. I mean, somebody sat down and made Monopoly. Yeah, so that was a creative sort of thing that, that would happen there. So that's just another example. And once you get used to sort of uh, working with your dice, making your own and so forth, uh, it, you know, it gets the creative juices going a little bit. So let's take you, you happy how that game works? It's pretty obvious once you, you play. Absolutely. It, I, have a, I have a question though. Is it better for children to use dot dice or number dice, numeric number dice? Okay, so we've got two different purposes. So the dot mm -hmm. dice, just so you can see, I'll just bring it up so you can see pretty uh, clearly here. I'll bring my, my giant one back in so you get, has what they call a subitizing pattern, a standard pattern yeah. that we would like children to be able to recognise. That would say, okay, so I recognize a standard pattern. However, I also don't want the children to become dot counters. I want them to see for, not count for. Okay. Yeah. So then what I might do is as I get a bit older, I want to sort of change it up a little bit. I might change from a, a dot dice to a number dice. Um, and so you might have the numeral six instead of six dots and so forth. So it's just maybe a different time at school. Older children, for example, um, you know, they don't need necessarily need the dot dot. Not bad using them, but I might change it to a numeral dice. For example, typically your 10-sided dice have numerals 0 to 9 on them. Not, But you can get them in dots, okay? Um, you can also get, yeah, so that one's got the numerals on it. Um, you can also get uh, dice that have the words on it, 1, 2, 3, 4, right. and so forth. Yeah, so there's quite a variation in that that sense so essentially when you're playing a game it's not that difficult to um change it 
just by changing the dice. So I'll just take you through a couple of other games just so that people have got a little bit of a, a little repertoire that they might like to, to play uh, at home and so forth. So we just played Avoiding Seven, okay? Uh, I should say here, look, um, we realize that some people may not have any dice or be still in lockdown in various places. So we've actually programmed a little dice uh, um, simulator. If you want to whiz on our website, just go to the probability interactive materials. You click a button and the dice will spin over and they'll be uh, uh, six-sided and ten-sided. So if someone hasn't got dice and they can't make the spinner, don't feel that you can't play these games. Okay? There's a really interesting little simulation there of showing you that seven comes up a lot when you add two dice. So I just thought anyone who doesn't have access to some dice or sometimes children think, oh, because it's on computer, it must be really good. So you can play it on your iPad or, or something like that. So I do like children rolling the dice, but it's not bad for them to see, particularly like what would happen if I rolled a thousand times or, or something of that nature. So let's just take us into uh, uh, another game. Um, and I wanted to just link the idea that dice can be focused on specific content that we want to do. Now, an earlier discussion that you and I've had was about place value. And so here's an example of a game that you could use to do place value. Uh, we're just going to stick with the six sided dice, but I'm just going to use my whiteboard. And all you need to do really is in this case here, I've just ruled up two pretty basic columns. Okay. One's the tens and one's the ones. So when I roll the dice, it's going to go into a particular place. That's why we call it place value. And let me imagine I'm going to rig this a little bit, Heather. So if I roll a two, I have a choice as to whether I'm going to go for two ones or 20. So if I put the two in this spot here, two tens, that means we've got 20. If I was to put it in the ones place, it would be worth two. Now, the aim of the game is I'm going to have seven rolls. Each of us could have seven rolls. We could do the same dice, doesn't really matter. Okay, so if you were playing, you know, we're playing group against each other, we'd each rule up exactly what I've got there. I have seven rolls. So if I roll again, no, I just have, I'll roll, I'll roll it again. I roll a six. How amazing is that? Okay, so that's the same magic dice again. So at the end of the game, I want to have a total as close to 100 as I can. So I'm probably not going to put the six in this tens place because if I put the six here, I've already used up 80 and I've got five more rolls to go. So you start to see I'm getting in my head a bit of a strat. It's not just about the addition. It's not just about place value. It's now about, oh, so if I've used up 80, I'm going to bust. I've got to go in a different spot. So it's about what they call strategic or reasoning. So it's about the strategy or the strategic thinking the reasoning. So let me give you an example. So take you back down here. Probably with that six, a good choice would be now to go here and I'm at 26. If you want to keep a running total, you can. So I know I'm at 26 at this point here. Okay. If I roll again, we won't play the whole game because you'll get the idea how it works. I rolled a one. Probably in this case here, I'm going to go for, I think I'll go 10. And that means progressively I'm now 36. So I'm going to roll one more time and let's think about where we might put it in there. So a two. Now I'm actually thinking here, I want to get pretty close to a hundred. And so I've got to get this game a bit closer, but maybe I need to go here. I think I'm, I'm three, four rolls in. So I'm going to make this choice and I'm going to say, I've got two tens or 20 and now I'm 56. So I've got three more rolls. And I'm nearly, you know, I could get that sort of point there. So let me just take it a step further. So I'm going to roll again. Or oh, I rolled a four. Now, whoa, that's actually pretty neat. Because I put the four here. I'm now 56 takes me to 60. I've got two more shots to play here. So let's see how we go. One. I think I'm going to oh. put it here. Yeah. Bit of a risky at this point, 70. So what number would I love to come up? Wow, wouldn't it be really great if all of a sudden a fluke, oh, look at that, Heather, a three came up. <laughs> three. How, how amazing was that? And I, I got 100. But you could start to see here we've got the dice are generating the numbers. All right, so that's the, 
The second is that happens a bit randomly. So I have a, I had a game plan and I might have to change it. Right? That's the reasoning part that's happening here. So you see the strategic thinking and I'm learning a bit about place value at the same time. So essentially um, what I think that the neat part about this is, is really the thinking about how dice can generate, well, just so many different possibilities. If you really think about it today, We've actually only really used the six-sided dot dice. We haven't had to really worry about the ten-sided one. Now we could change. We could change and use the zero to nine one. We could use the pocket dice, as I said before. But the maximum thing we had to use is two uh, six-sided dice. That's amazing, isn't it? That's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. So all are all of these games available on your website for people to have a look at? Uh, yeah, well, look, most of them uh, we've either explained. Uh, we can make the you know the well when the uh, this goes up, people can download the um, the PowerPoint that we've been looking at today, and so th there's enough explanation there. And probably I've made a video clip somewhere. I've got bundles of various games that I put up, little dice games and card games and so forth. But I try and keep it nice and simple. And the other thing is, to be frank with you, I let children make little changes to the rules, a bit like we talked about changing the, the house rules for Monopoly, and they add these extra little um, ideas to it, which makes it their game. So a bit like I talked about Mary's game before, we named that after a child. She loved it. Let's play Mary's game. You know, We might have John's game or Murray's game or something like that. Or anything. The other game that I love is that you have it's more with a spinner is your multi-spin game. Yeah, so okay. Game. Yep. It's like it's like dice, it's spinners, dice, but we use that a lot. You know how you're saying the strategy? And so when we do it, we always block each other. So if we do three or we do four, trying first to three or four. So I think that's actually worth having a look at too if you've got a chance. All right. Well, well thanks, Heather. I hope that you know there was a few ideas for people that uh, you know try with dice.